Number one is, is listening. Just listen. If you ask more questions and listen more, people will give you all the answers. They'll tell you why they want to buy. They'll tell you what they want. And if you just listen, whew, like you can do really well. Today, we get to speak with Chris Baden, the CEO and co-founder of FlowChat, a SaaS company that has a unique way of acquiring new customers. Their organic tool and strategies have led to boosting their company and others to over 100K per month revenue. While Chris isn't building businesses, he's building a lifelong marriage, world impacting family, and has competed on America Ninja Warrior. So let's dig into this episode. I'm Janet Ahmed, host of Hacks and Hobbies podcast, and a digital presence advisor at HumbleZone. This episode is brought to you by Home Studio Mastery. I launched a consultation and course program to help podcasters and course creators to create a space in their homes that will reduce the friction of creating content and appearing their best when showing up on camera. The pandemic gave us a lot of issues, but this one is here to stay. We're now so much closer to our audience thanks to video becoming more popular and affordable. I help guide folks who want to create Hollywood-worthy studios to not only capture great content, but also build more confidence, more authority, and be more comfortable in front of the camera. If I can do it, you can too. And with my help, you can do it faster. So if you'd like to learn more, visit homestudiomastery.com and how you too can create a home studio that brings out your personality, professionalism, and possibilities. Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. We're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life who want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. Chris, thank you so much for jumping on and coming onto the podcast. Janae, excited to hang out with you as always, and everyone listening will get a lot of value from this episode. Absolutely, they will, man. I've gotten a ton of value every time I'm, I'm on a call with you, so they'll absolutely know what's up and what Chris has got. All right, so we're just going to have a chill conversation. We're going to talk about your origin story. So tell us a version of your journey that no one's heard of before. Mm -mm. Well, well, Janae, in 1987. <laughs> so I was born in 1987. Nice. A, a, a part of my story that I don't often talk about is a story that's not fully about me. Mm. You've heard some of the story because we've we've talked. Uh, uh, Ten, you know, yeah. Yeah. But when I go on other people's platforms, a story I don't typically talk about is not fully about me. And it is about my two boys, Emmett and Levi. And they're uh, five and three. Levi's about to turn four uh, later this month. And they started their first business. And so I think, you know, when, the reason I'm bringing this up is in my entrepreneurial journey, like I've, I've built three different companies, all did a million dollars or more per year in sales. And they were smaller teams. And so one was insurance, one was e-com, one was software. My fourth and most current one uh, is, as you know, software. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've done consulting, you know, and helped businesses go to, to seven and eight figures. Haven't dabbled with the nine figure yet, um, but <laughs> uh, my business partner, get there. I, we've, he, he has a lot of books in him. He's, he's, he's very talented. His name's Sean, Sean Maloney, mm -hmm. been business partners for a while. The other one currently is Bruno and he's our, our tech wizard and engineer, but in all this journey, Sales is my core competency and really I boil sales. This is a great, like write something down moment, you know, so far in the episode, I boil sales down to three simple things. Here are the three simple things. One to sell effectively. Number one is practice is listening. Number one is, is listening. Just listen. If you ask more questions and listen more, people will give you all the answers. They'll tell you why they want to buy. They'll tell you what you, they, what they want. And mm -hmm. if you just listen, Oof, like you can do really well. Yeah. Uh, the second thing, number two, is practicing empathy. Before, listen, and then before you say anything, just for a second, sit there and just to your best of your intellectual and emotional capacity, process what it might be like to be that person. 
and practice some empathy so you can understand if you were them, what would you actually do? Like for real, honestly, right? Not like, well, I got this cool idea and you should, you should, you should, you should, mm-hmm. and you're shooting all over them. Yeah. Maybe just listen, pause. If you were them and you like practice that empathy, what would you do? Very powerful. Third and last one is creatively solve problems. The reason usually someone's coming to us is because they don't know about other solutions that are available to them or they've thought about it and they just haven't found an answer yet. So therefore, practicing using creativity of different ways of how to actually solve the problem becomes a really important muscle to flex and creatively solving problems. The one way to sum that up is there's a big difference between a poor mindset and a wealthy mindset. Very Mm -hmm. big difference between a poor mindset and a wealthy mindset. A poor, and and, you know, what's funny is you can give one problem to a poor mindset and the same problem to a wealthy mindset and get drastically different results. A poor mindset says, I can't afford that. Hmm. I can't do that. A wealthy mindset says, also can't do it, but they ask a different question. A wealthy mindset says, how can I afford that? Hmm. How can I afford not to do this? How could I do this? Right. And so a lot of times you can other, I'm just like throwing a bunch of tools out, out here, Janaid. No, um, something that can be really effective for yourself. The hardest person on planet earth is to sell, to sell as ourselves. Sell number one. ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> but number two, when we're talking with somebody else, a really effective tool is the magic wand. And when any objection you get, you just apply the magic wand. So, yeah. you know, Janaid, if you're, you're selling me on like home studio, design implementation etc and i'm like uh well you know i just like we might move and the, like the setting might change and your magic wand you could say chris what if we put a magic wand we just i, I had a magic wand and i waved it over your current situation and it fast forwarded us to the room that an office that you would be in yeah. and like what then what would you want what we're doing is we're taking the objection we're waving the magic wand over it And we're saying, well, what could we do? And how could we solve the problem? Fast forwarding it to, oh, well, I would easily just do this, 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 and this, and this. And you know what we would discover, Janaid? We would discover that all the things that I want in my new office would end up being the things that I get in my current office and I could just transport with me. Transport it over. Right. So it's, that's, I just want to give a tangible example of, well, Chris, what does creatively solving problems mean? And it yeah. typically means playing in the wealthy mindset, obsessively often asking que- that question of how can we do this? How can I afford, you know, to join the program, to get the tool, to get the service, to how can I move my business forward? How can I hire the team I need? How can I build the systems that I need that are eating at my soul because I'm just buried and overwhelmed in my, and my, my business, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Round well, one. How are we doing Janae? Round one. <laughs> and that I didn't even excellent. tell the story about my kids. <laughs> yeah. We, we didn't even get to the story about your kids. We just, we just got like solid points on, on what you do and what you need to do. And listening is absolutely perfect because if you don't know what your customer wants, how are you going to, tell them how to solve that problem because not only are we sale not only are we problem solvers as entrepreneurs we're essentially problem solvers because what did we do first we solved our own problem mm-hmm. right once we solve our problem other people's like wait how'd you do that like oh i did it this way like, and then they start asking those questions well that's where the listening comes in right they are listening or we're listening to their questions or or why are they even fascinated like oh i just solved it i just you know it's just something i did but what we don't realize is uh, not only do we have not only did we solve our own problem but it's also a lot of people are also facing similar problems they just don't have the same expertise or skills that we bring to the table 100 percent if I had to solve a problem by capturing intentions audience through through the art of song, that wouldn't go well for anybody. <laughs> but if my wife 
mm-hmm. had that had to solve that same problem, everyone would love it because yeah. she's great at singing and engaging an audience. It's anyway, not everyone has the same skill set and background, you know. But if I could, you know, hire her or have her, you know, help me, you know, solve my own problem, it would obviously go faster and be a better outcome. So, and not to leave everyone hanging. Yeah. The reason I brought up my kids when you said unusual story as it pertains to entrepreneurship is that they have their own business. Uh, my mm-hmm. oldest five now, his, he started his first business when he was three and he came busting into my, my office here and he's like, dad. And I was like, well, like, is everything okay? What's going on? He's like, I want to get a toy. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. He's oh. normal. That's not, <laughs> like just another, of course you want a toy. And sure. he's like, can we go get a toy? I said, absolutely. We can go get a toy. He's like, right now. I was like, sure, but we're going to need money. It's like, really, Chris, you're telling your three-year-old he needs money? <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm telling my three-year-old he needs money. Yeah. Because he does. School now, look, doesn't teach you that. Has... Somebody's got to. That's right, right? So it's like, look, he has shelter. He has clothes. He has a mom and a dad and brother and sister that love him. Mm-hmm. And he also has toys. <laughs> already. He already has toys, exactly. It's not like we're in the bottom nothing, but mm-hmm. he's... He, uh, he wanted a toy and he does, he does need money. I wanted him to understand the thought process of I'm inspired. I have vision. I have idea. And here's how I can actualize that. Here's how I can contribute to society and solve problems and see the bigger picture that it's not just about him, but this, this whole process is really all about others. And so if the sales stuff that I rant about on this on this podcast <laughs> and in my own business and other people put up with me and listen to me if they're so dynamic and valuable and profitable that they build multi-million dollar businesses but yet they're also so simple that even a five and a three-year-old can use them can and do execute it. Yeah. this is exactly there, there might beautiful. be something there i mean if a five and three-year-old can take what you're teaching and build a business out of it what can us grown-ups can get out of that. And if you're teaching your own kids the thing, you know, you're of course, you know, us parents, of course, we're going to give our kids like the best. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right? Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. They're, it, and what it, what's cool is they've really taken a liking to it. I want them to understand that work is, work is healthy. Work is good. It can be abused. It can be uh, an addiction. It can yeah. be unbalanced. Not that it has to be balanced all the time. Most, you know, I'm more of like a all in go be fully present, you know, all business, all business. And then, you know, when it's family as best I can <laughs> be all, all family, all and 100% I'm, family. I'm not, yep. you know, listen, I'm guilty of trying to squeeze another message or text or juggle too. But in any event, like they've, they've taken a liking to it. And in fact, they, they just completed their first commercial. Their new business nice. is Baden boy ads. So they do commercials and ad- advertisements. And so they there got paid go. $20 each and they completed a commercial uh, for an entrepreneurial magazine. And look at that. Um, yeah. So, the, I mean, they're, so, and they, they wore the suits and they were excited and they did their lines and, and they know that like, well, why are we doing this? What problem did we solve? Well, we helped tell more people about this magazine Yeah, and that is helping that, you know, publisher solve a problem they have. So. So can, let's continue the story. Your son comes in. He's like, I want a toy. Yeah. And you asked him, hey, what, what, we'll need, we need money. So what happened after that? It's a good question because, you know, at, in the moment, Janaid, I was just, you know, full of principle and excitement. I'm going to, you know, give you all the great tools, son. And, and, but the reality was like, I have freaking have no idea how a three-year-old solves a problem. <laughs> I, I haven't solved that one yet. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, I, you know, I was like, but what the first thing I did was I was like, I don't know. I can't. I'm like, well, that voice can go, you know, take a back seat yeah. uh, for a nice way of saying it. And I was like, well, how, hmm, how could a three-year-old solve a problem? And you said something powerful earlier. You said, first, we typically solve our own problems. So fast forward later that day, we were going to go run an errand or do something and we couldn't find our keys. Mm-hmm. And so we're like what randomly flashed in my head was just like a giant keychain. I don't know. I have all kinds of different ideas fly yeah. throughout my, my brain throughout the day. And I was like, oh, Emmett, hey, what if, if we had a, big keychain, we wouldn't lose our keys anymore. What if we help others not lose their keys 
with big keychains. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually skipped the, the errand. And of course, my wife has a leather making kit. Sure. I don't, she's, she brings the color of my world, right? <laughs> she's the actual fun one to hang out with. And, you know, a lot of personality and, and, you know, it's got feathers and colors mm. and leather making kits, apparently. So yeah, we cut out a giant leather keychain and he scribbles paint on it. And Janae, it's so beautiful. Oh, the artwork. No, it's a three-year-old scribbling paint on a leather thing, <laughs> yeah, right? It's on. not, <laughs> that's what it is. But you know what's awesome about it is seeing business through the eyes of a three-year-old mm. was was really powerful for me. I st- I'll never, I mean, it's, it's two years ago, right? All right. Yeah, yeah. But I, I won't forget it because he, like, the passion, the love, it still solved the problem. None of our, everyone listening to this, is your product, is your service perfect? Mine's not. It's good. It's really good. Good. It's not perfect. It shouldn't right? be perfect. But it is, get. but it does serve. It does. And it does get a result. Yeah. Okay. And and so his passion, commitment to that. And once he did that, I was like, shoot, I guess we're doing this, right? Mm-hmm. I was, it felt really like I was almost being pulled through the process yeah. the first time. And it just kind of came out and it just kind of happened to be, to be honest. That was like my experience of it. And then I said, well, you're going to need a pitch. And so you're going to make your three-year-old go, p- yes, I'm going to make, I didn't <laughs> look, I didn't make up how the world works, <laughs> but I, I need to, I, I want to equip my, my kids with tools yeah. and skills and character yeah. to be able to navigate, you know, the, the world as we know it. So yeah, we eventually got it down to my name's Emmett and I help people not lose their keys. And he just, he just said that line Boom. and, and then he would show them the keychain. And so we went door to door. Not the neighbors that we know. Screw that. I like and and this anyone listening. Like if you're bringing your product or service to market, you got to go sell it. Go to the cold market. Oh, but Chris, they're so mean, and they're, you're right. But that's why they're perfect. Because mm. they don't they don't care about you. Because they They'll don't be have honest a, with you. They don't have a What's connection. That? They don't have a connection with you. Yeah, like if you're or if you're a relationship, right? So they're not going to think twice about hurting your feeling. Yes. Yes. And unless they're kind people. And and there are some of those kind people. There's plenty of not kind people out there. Mm-hmm. Catch people on a bad day. But but that is all part of life too. Yeah. If you're gonna be a doctor, if you're gonna be a lawyer, if you're gonna be an actor, musician, business athlete, whatever, you're gonna face rejection. Yes. But how we process rejection will determine the trajectory of our life. Oh, amen. Some people think that it's a bad thing. And it emotionally destroys them. And the truth is we all know like what it feels like. And it doesn't feel good. I'm not, I'm not debating Mm-mm. that. No. But how we feel and how we respond, we actually get to choose. And if you don't it, it, like we all have thoughts, beliefs, and systems that we're operating under, you know, or with, right? And if you don't know that or you're not aware of yours, then you already have them and you just don't know what they are. But if yeah. you do know what they are, you start beginning to increase your awareness and therefore your ability to decide what program you operate under. And that will change the trajectory of your life. So for M, it's so cool to work with him earlier in life because you know what happened? He knocks on the first door. No one answers. He knocks on the second, the third door. No one answers. His shoulders start to shrug. I was like, well, you know, I didn't know how this was going to go. I know he's right. going to probably face some stuff, but I yeah. wanted to walk through that with him, not, you know, like hide him from it. Yeah. And the fourth one, the door opened and the guy walks out and Emmett freaking nails it. He's like, my name's Emmett and I help people not lose their keys. And he shows him the keychain. I was like, yeah, get it, dude. That's <laughs> you just nailed that shit. So, so then the guy looks at the keychain. He looks back at Emmett and he says, my name's Jim. No, thanks. It's like, oh, you heartless monster. <laughs> like you could just feel like. I'm sorry, you're not having a good day. Like, yeah. oh, Christy said no thing. Yeah, but the tone and the feel. And and so I'm standing on the side. I'm mm-hmm. watching, you know, uh, Jim in this case, speak to my son Emmett. And I see him speak and that message start to translate across the airwaves. And right before it hit Emmett's, you know, brain and he processed it, I gasped. I was like, oh, Emmett, did you hear what he said? And he kind of gets pattern interrupt you know, from me. And he, he turns and looks at me. He's like, no, what do you say? I said, 
Mr. Jim doesn't have a problem losing his key, so we can just find somebody else that does. He's like, oh, cool. Bam. Okay. And he just jumps in his little wagon, and then we start pulling the wagon. He's got his keychain, right? And, um, you know, that – and some people – you know, like they face rejection, like people didn't answer. They didn't say yes, but he, you know, we talk, we talk about perseverance and other life skills and stuff throughout yeah. the process, which is a great platform just to have conversation while you're experiencing it. But the thing that crushed me is as we were walking away from the door, Emmett looks back over his right shoulder and he said, after he just got quote unquote rejected yeah. and he says, Bye, Mr. Jim, with a big smile. Have a nice day. And I, I'm like, like, to love those that love us is one thing, but to love those that reject us, yeah, it's that's a little hard. bit different. Yeah. And so to see a three year old just kind of exude that that innocence and that and that love, and be on his passionate mission to get his you know green Power Ranger toy that was nine dollars and change <laughs> after shipping. And, and just make a keychain, and, and he had it like, we're only selling for three bucks. So he had to sell multiple keychains. Yeah. And he did, he did. He earned uh, 13 bucks. Some people gave a little bit more cause they were excited about it. Yeah. So he had to do it multiple times. And after a couple iterations, uh, cause he also learned that if you make Janae, if you make $13, do you get $13? No, of course Hell not. no, you don't. <laughs> I don't. And if you know how you better let me know. <laughs> you got to pay right? the. You got to pay the processing fee. You got to pay the material, all those, right? Everything can't. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, and it's like, well, Chris, my gosh, like the guy, come on. He did a pitch. He made a thing. He went up. Look, I didn't make up how the world freaking works. Is he no. going to learn it when he's three or is he going to learn it? Like, why not? Should he not learn it because, Janae, because he's too young? Is it because he's too short? Is it because he's too tall? Is he too fat? He's too skinny. He's too this. He's too that. That voice can pound sand. Like the world speaks to us, speaks to you. Janaid, you listening to this like that, that voice can go freaking pound sand. Not in my house. I'm not going to be that voice for my kids. Yeah. Right. And so, but I will be the voice that asks like, hmm, how could we do that? Dad, I like, like, okay. You know, my sons can climb on the fridge. Mm -hmm. Not a good idea. It's not a good idea. I'm no, there, not. My right? My daughter's doing that too. Yeah, you know, it's probably, okay, so I'm not alone. That makes you feel a little no. better. Yeah, I have, but, I have some pictures and video. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, oh, I'm just getting that that jar of jelly back there. Like, okay. And I, t- I told him, I'm like, look, if I ever catch you doing this while I'm not around, you're in trouble. But if I'm here, you can climb the fridge. Our house, you know, whatever, good, bad, right, or wrong. But he was, but the reason I did it one day is because he was like frustrated. I was like, yeah. well, let's think about this. How could you do it? Because I'm training to ask the question of how, how, how be creative, solve problems. And so that that's a principle that's living out even in my kid's life. And, and that led to my three-year-old starting his first business. And and then my, you know, three and two-year-old started their feel good pizza business and had their route and they would make dough, you know, you throw ingredients in a blender, like, well, they're two and three, they can dump flour in a blender. You can push a button. Are you kidding me? So anyway, I'm just, Donald, I love, is that I a, love a decent story. story there, Janine? No, that's beautiful because I want to I want to bring back to the power of rejection. So there's yeah. a book called Rejection Therapy. Mm. I don't know. I think it's called The Power of Rejection by Jia Zhang. So he was having trouble trying to sell his ideas, but he's like, every time he get rejected, he felt a lot of pain. Yeah. So he found out about rejection therapy where they say, okay, for 30 days, go do something that you would never do and get rejected. Or go do something that's going to give you, like, it's a definite rejection. Yeah. Right? So he's like, I'm going to do this for 100 days. And I'm going to film it. Right? So he goes up to this <sighs> stranger man. He's like, I like this guy. Excuse me, sir. May I borrow $100? And the guy says no. And he immediately just runs away. <laughs> right? <laughs> recording everything it's like okay then he thinks about it it's like okay what changed what happened like i got the rejection but i should have asked why they're not going to give you money like ask the question why like change the perspective sure they say no um so anyways he does a hundred times he goes to krispy kreme donuts he says he goes up to them like you know 
I want to make a set of donuts that looks like the Olympic sign. So the lady thinks, like, hmm, I'll be right back. So he waits sitting there and he's like recording the video. And then this lady comes back. He's like, I don't know the exact colors, but here's the Olympic sign with donuts. So she got all five colors. She puts them all together. She cuts them out. <laughs> because this guy asked, they're like, okay, let's go ahead and try it. Another cool story that he said, okay, he basically took flowers to somebody and they're like, well, we're not interested in flowers, but this guy, my neighbors, loves flowers. They'll probably buy it. So he learned so many lessons. He, you know, he wrote a book. He, he did a TED talk around it. But what he learned is that if you don't ask, if you're already afraid of rejection, oh, oh what if somebody says no, you're automatically rejecting yourself. So don't reject yourself. Have somebody else <laughs> reject you. So then at least you have somebody else to talk to. That's fun. That's an interesting perspective. In a sales conversation, like that's so important. How many sales have you talked yourself out of? You know, like All you have them? it, it's there, but you you talk. Yeah, sorry, and not you. Like everyone listening, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally do that. And I, <laughs> I've done. Like somehow I still earn this right to keep playing this game of business. You know, mm -hmm. ten years later, but you know, and, and I'll I'll do it to a certain extent. You know, m myself, but that's that's such a you know, let people that want to buy just let them buy. You know, look, yeah. don't. And what does that look like practically? It looks like not reaching out. Yeah. It looks like not you know, producing content. If you want to do more of a marketing play, it looks like not do, you know, doing any referrals. It looks yeah. like, and, and those, those slow little micro decisions that we reduce our efforts on or, or just stop. And then we wonder why things aren't growing. And the truth is when you just lean in and you do those little things, it, stuff begins to grow and, and uh, yeah, it can take you some fun places. Absolutely. You're so right. You got to do the ask. You got to put yourself out there and that's how you move forward. Yeah. When you said, move you know, forward by moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. You know, I just, as you're saying it, that's what was going through my head. And I'm like, even a couple. When you said, yeah. don't stop the sale or, or, you know, so what's funny is that human beings, we love to buy shit, man. We got oh, yeah. Amazon packages come in on the door. Nobody's selling that to us. We're buying stuff all oh, the yeah. time. We go to the shopping store. We go to the mall. Why? Because we love to buy. Yeah. We just don't like to be sold. Yeah. Right. Right. Don't sell. That's don't true. sell on me. Like, don't sell me stuff. Yeah. You know, and and because they will buy when you come. Oh, so yeah. I'm still getting it into my head. I'm still getting over the rejection that I had ten years ago when I was doing cold calls and trying oh, to sell yeah. people used computers, used laptops. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's and, and a quick note on that. Cause like, I've definitely, you know, that's how I started to smiling and dialing, you know, I was selling credit card processing. Oh gosh. <laughs> and you cold call a business and I can save you money. Can I see your statement? You know, it's like, you know, you start with the, the cold outreach and the problem with cold outreach is it works. <laughs> that's the problem. You know, if it didn't work, it's like, oh yeah, that's garbage. You know, right. why would you do that? It doesn't even work. No, well, no, that effort and activity works. And, you know, there's some, you know, there's a balance of understanding and processing rejection. And, uh, and then there's an also another element of do your best to put yourself in environments and, and processes you don't have to go through a meat grinder, right? Because I'm not trying yes. to, I'm not trying to tell somebody, well, here's how you can just reframe cold calling and actually grow to love it. No, I hate cold calling still <laughs> to this day. Right. I make, I like, I don't, I haven't done it in years, Yeah. but I, but it's like, I, I, re, I will never forget the feeling. I'm like, okay, I got I got five, 25 more dials, 25 more. Okay. I got to hit the 25 today, mm -hmm. you know? And then I knew my metrics and I was just like, Ah, oh, gosh, and whatever lists and, you know, following up from cards that we met someone from whatever before. Ugh, it just, I'm not here to sell somebody on the idea right. that you can emotionally begin to love that and think it's fantastic. If you do, then please reach out to me. I'd love for you to join my sales team. <laughs> but Amen. yeah, so I'm not, and, and if you do too much of it, there is emotional like 
I don't know, scarring or damage or where you're, it kind of affects you overall. Yeah. And so I think there is a healthy balance in there. Now that all being said through some cold calling and th- through, you know, market research, going to a cold market, you're going to learn. You're going to, the reason I like cold market first is because they're more honest and I like speed. Mm. So if you're really, they're like, whoa, this is actually really good. You're like, really? Like, yeah, well, why? And they're like, well, this is why I'm like, oh, well, that makes sense. Like that they're giving sense. me all the answers or they're like, this sucks. Oh, well, why do you say it sucks? Well, because yeah. here's why. And it's like, oh, well, that's also very helpful. Let's change that. And so eventually you start getting all of this feedback from the market, mm. let people buy the way they want to buy and what they want to buy. And then you come back to them and they're like, well, here's the deal. And they're like, oh my gosh, it's like, you're reading my mind. How did you think of this? <laughs> uh, it's because I'm a genius. No, it's because yeah, I just did me. the work yeah. Yeah. and listened to the market. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So yeah. One of the best ways to do that is go to not your like you know your warm circles yeah but you can uh, chat forums you know on different facebook linkedin instagram there's a lot of different for if you go venture off and on google to i know the the begotten a, page two page three page four page five of google yeah. that is like i don't i barely even scroll down page one on google these days but all this being no. said <laughs> if you do go to the great unknown on google there's other forums there and in, in uh, reddit uh, quora Telegram, Discord, there's a lot of different communities. There's a ton, communities. There's a ton of yeah. places, yeah. Absolutely. Man, I love all the conversation we have been having. Uh, we learned about your journey, your kid's journey and into sales and into you know, entrepreneurship, your motivations for the things you do, right? Why are you doing it? Well, we want to make sure that our kids are well prepared for the, for the real world yeah. because school is not teaching this. School's going to teach you mathematics, English, composition, stuff like that. But real world stuff that you get to learn either being in the job or you take a class for it, like financial freedom, taxes, mental toughness. School doesn't teach you. So we as parents have to step up and teach that to our children. So I love all of that, man. Yeah. Yeah. Share with the audience a couple of tips that they can immediately implement. And I think you gave us a bunch of tools in the beginning. But what yeah, we- uh, so here's a process that I like to do. If I'm bringing a product or service to market, the, I, and this is the same formula. Uh, for example, the recent software company, You know, we our first full month of sales was in April of, I don't know when, whenever this will be posted, April of uh, 2021. Mm-hmm. And so we, we did 35,000 just over you know, in sales that month and then continue to do more and more. We pat it took us for on our fourth month, we passed the hundred thousand. We did like $105,000 in sales wow. um, and change that, that month. And well, how, how did you grow, you know, so fast and well market research. And that's, there's, that's the first step in the three-step process of bringing any product or tool to market. So how, well, how do you do market research, Chris? What does that mean? Go talk to people. Look, if you're building a course, if you're building a service or a product, the answer is not in your head. You're not going to lock yourself in some room and have this magical moment of epiphany, right? Even if you do, Mm -hmm. you're going to have to go outside of the room and share it with more people. And my point is this. The answer is in the mind of the market. It is in the mind of the, your, your prospect and your consumer. And if you go and ask them, they will tell you. And you'll get all the answers to the t- test. So for step yes, one is market research. Go, th- th- all the gold is in their mind, their perspective, right? And then you're going to get all these problems and all this data. And, and we did this. When we brought our sales agency to market, so we, I, my third company, the software company. I sold that to a competitor uh, mm-hmm. two years ago. And then the first 30 days did nothing. See ya, I'm out. <laughs> and then after 30 days, we were bored. And so we got back together with my former business partners and still now current business partners. And, and we're like, well, what do we do? Well, we know sales. Like, well, let's do a sales agency and help people sell stuff. And so yeah. we did client work. But before we did that in our market research, we interviewed 40 different companies. I don't know how many we reach out to to book 40, yeah. yeah, more than 40. 
Boy, and, and we definitely. interviewed and we said, what problems are you having with sales? Well, you know, man, like we can't build a, you know, a targeted lead list. We're really struggling with um, our sales calls. Like we're getting a bunch of leads, but we can't close any of the calls. Chris, I'm, I'm closing deals. Business is growing, but I'm so tired of taking sales calls. Like I'm drowning. I can't do the other part of the business. I need a sales team. Okay. Well, we can't track our KPIs. We have no infrastructure, SOPs, standard operating procedures for their sales. Okay. Well, we need a sales department. Okay. So the problem, so we're asking all these problems around sales. Mm -hmm. And there's two that came up out of all those 40 companies we talked to, two that just kept coming up over and over and over and over again. It's like, you know what? We can solve those. We'll commit to solving those. And so here's the, the second step. Pick one of those companies and, and serve them for free. Yeah. Get them, get them the result. Can you duplicate you and get somebody else the result? And, and then the next immediate thing is how fast can you get that result? Because if it's not fast enough, it's not interesting enough. Yeah. And, you know, is it a painful experience? Is it a good experience? And so you're kind of refining that. And then you have that first person that you get a desirable result. You have them actually do the selling for you. You're talking to someone. Oh, you remind me of so-and-so. They just yeah. went through this, feeling this, and here's the result they got. Oh my gosh, that's exactly what I'm looking to do. Really? Mm -hmm. Right. And so for, for us and our sales agency to follow the example, what we did was just that. We served somebody for free. And so we adjusted that we did a, you know, we anal uh, did an analysis of their sales process. They hadn't closed, Janae, they hadn't closed anything in over three months. Wow. The business was now over six figures in debt. Okay. We met with them. We did the analysis, we adjusted their sales process and we made it instead of a one call, we made it two calls. We said, here's what you say on the call. We took their $2,000 offer. We bumped it to $15,000 and, and added a couple of deliverables because that's more of what the market segment was wanting. Yeah. And what happened is we got a call a week and a half later and they said, I just closed over $75,000 in business in the last week and a half. How do I hire you guys? <laughs> He said, well, let's talk. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then we had our first paying client, right? And then um, now if, if you don't get that result, why didn't you? And how why can you? Why you get the result? Yeah. Lather, rinse, repeat. And then you finally get it. Your energy will build. Because a lot of people feel this. They're like, well, I'm insecure to go sell my thing. I don't know if it's really going to work. Mm. Well, you know what people don't want to buy? Half-ass conviction. That's what they don't want to buy. You know, they don't want to buy some, a maybe they don't want to buy a maybe that's not fun. That doesn't feel nope. good. Nope. They want to, they want to buy a, you know, knight in shining armor, you know, where, who's that like rides on a horse in slow motion. <laughs> Nobody, <laughs> so right. apparently yeah, you, 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 people are usually buying confidence. They're buying a result. They're, they're buying, you know, emotional support. That's right. Um, that leads to results. So, you know, that, you know, take that pressure off. That pressure is actually screwing you up. Go serve somebody for free on, on the weekend, right? And then it goes to the third phase, which is how, how do you begin to scale that? How do you, you know, do the unscalable until it's scalable? You're serving all in, one-on-one, -on -one, whatever for that client and and charge for it too. Like we, yeah. we charged, you know, a high ticket. Look, like if we just help you sell $75,000, like, okay, well, how much is your service cost? I don't know, 50 grand, <laughs> 30 grand. Yeah. And then you, we, we make, you're going to make it back in 30 to 90 days, you know? So, exactly. but then you can, you can start putting team and system in place to replace, you know, buy back your time and then acquire more. And then, you know, things continue to grow, but those are three simple steps. I love it. I love the, your process analogy and thinking through. And I mean, you've been doing this for 10 years, so obviously you've got it down, right? Yeah. I love that. Yep. That's that's beautiful. Thank you it's, so much. It's three simple steps to me at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but after you're like, and and here's the thing, like we're all on our journey. It's not like, you know, right now my focus is how do I build a company that has a 50 plus million dollar valuation? How do I do that? I've yeah. I've built companies, and if you have if you build a company that is five million per year in sales and has a 10 multiple. Mm -hmm. then then it's valued at, I know I'm getting kind of geeky with numbers here, then it's valued at $50 million. Yeah. Right? Someone's buying future cash. But, you know, how do you do that? I don't yeah. know. I don't come from money. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I've never sold a company for fi- I've never sold anything for fifty million dollars. Yeah, that's crazy talk. That's some giant Mount Everest stuff to me. You know, but you yeah. know what? Is it hard? Is it harder? Or is it just different? Is it just a new I, thought? I think it's just and a if new I, thought. And just, yeah. Yeah. And if I ask, well, how would I sell something for fifty million dollars? It's the same process. It's, it's the it's same the thing. Same you know? process, yeah. So I've been, so as you can now kind of self reveal, yeah, I'm self revealing here. Like I've yeah. been obsessing over that. How do I sell something for 50 plus million dollars? And, you know, I've, I researched a couple markets and, mm-hmm. you know, what's my, my background and network and resources. And later today I'll be, I'll be talking to an investor nice. that has 35 companies and he's currently in the process of buying one for $35 million, not quite 50. He has bought something for over 50. Nice. So now I'm starting to talk to people that actually buy things for $50 million. And Janae, do you know why? Why? Why did they because buy? Because they can tell me what, com- you know, what I'm like, Hey, why did you buy that for 50 million bucks? And they're yeah. going to say, well, because of this, and it had this return and here's the retention, the EBITDA and all these other weird all acronyms numbers, I've yeah. never heard before. And I'm going to write it down and then I'm going to Google it. <laughs> and, and so I've, I've just started studying new patterns. It's just a new thought. That's all. Well, Chris, I've got a, I don't know if you've heard of this guy, Nathan Latka. Have you heard of this name? I've been on his podcast too. He's, I was working at his house in Austin like Look a month that. ago. Look at that. This guy is a genius, right? He buys and sells company. He's, oh he's interviewed with people. You're already connected, he's, man. Well, but, but see, but that's such a good point that you bring up, Janae. Yeah. You're like, hey, Chris, you're in, you're in the software. SaaS, software as a service market. And there's this guy, Nathan Latka, you're mentioning. And he has, you know, I don't know if he sold, like, I I think he sold his first company at a loss. He openly admits, but he's done very well for himself. Yes, he has. And very, very smart guy. Very smart guy. Crazy with numbers. Yes. So, but yeah, I, I started research. I was like, well, like what's happening in the space? In the and space, I found yeah. Nathan. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go to his event. And then after the event, I was just meeting some of him and his team and I was there an extra day. And so I, we ended, I ended up just working at one of his like home offices, you know, with him and his team for a day. And they're really nice. They're really yeah. great people. And, and I, I learned some new metrics and things of, you know, mergers and acquisitions of how this is going. And, you know, this is just homework, you know? So I'm, no. I'm learning just like all of us. Man, I love that. This went in a totally the direction I was hoping it would go because, you know, <laughs> there's so much brain power here. Like when you put the best of the best minds together and then you're thinking forward thinking stuff, like how can I get to there? Well, let's figure it out, right? Reverse engineer it. And here we are. Man, I love I love the conversation. Yeah, it's been fun, Janine. I appreciate you having me on. Everything was great. So quick lightning round, few questions towards the end of the podcast. Mm, the lightning Let's round. get this rolling. <laughs> <laughs> what is the one hobby you wish you got into? Oh. Can you can I can you define tell me about hobby? I'm I, I'm not the best with hobbies. I'm like, I do this. <laughs> define hobby. Hobby is something that you love to do in your spare time. Just you know, fun. something that I haven't spent a ton of time on, but I would think is totally cool is calisthenics. Hmm. So but like body weight exercises, you know, yeah. like those guys that like do the, f- or girls yeah. that do the, the human flag and they like yeah. hold themselves out sideways or they do push-ups without oh their legs God. touching the ground. So strong. Yeah. I just see that stuff and I'm like, I want to be friends with you. That's so yeah. freaking cool. How do you, like, I feel How like you- I would do that. And then, you know, it's like, you just instantly be cool. So no, <laughs> I love that calisthenics. All right, but we'll put yeah. that in the books. Yeah, what I mean, did we you did, want... I did the American Ninja Warrior thing. You know, it's like obstacles, which is yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. But but calisthenics is like kind of in that same vein, but kind in of a different vein, subculture. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I saw this fifteen-year-old just totally crush the American Ninja Warrior course. Oh my gosh, those kids are fast. Oh my god. I was like, those kids are so, they would destroy me. <laughs> yeah, they would. All right. Next question. What did you want to be when you were a child? Oh man. The honest answer is an actor actually. 
Yeah, I took some. I, it was weird. There was like this thing, this card. I found it years later. Mm-hmm. Number one was to be an actor. Number two is to be like a baseball, you know, baseball player. player. And then number, I don't remember number three, but actor was the first. And then when I, I ironic, sorry, this is like jogging a bunch. Of, no, that's good. Uh, in high school, I took an ASVAB test, like a personality aptitude test, like what you're, and and the top result was to be an actor. You know what I've done in life? Nothing to do with acting. <laughs> <laughs> unless I'm, unless I'm, I'm, I'm just acting like a business owner and. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, you never know, right? Acting is. I'm playing this role. Acting is fun. I, I got to it scares play. Scares the piss out of me. <laughs> I I got to play some roles in you acting. Did. Yes, I've I've done a commercial. I've oh, done a, a, a patient for uh, Kaiser Permanente. I was like an extra in like one of the TV shows. It was fun. It was fun. That's cool. Nice. Do you watch movies? Or oh yeah. Okay. So, what is your favorite movie or TV show? Because I've asked that question to people. I'm like, oh, you know, I don't watch TV. Yeah, I mean, I love that response. But yeah, I call BS on that garbage. <laughs> like, look, I, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. Like, I don't watch cable. Yeah. You know, I don't watch a lot of it. You know, I'm not. it's not like, oh, I'm going to watch a show every night. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? I got three <laughs> kids under the age of six. Like, yes. I'm just trying to have enough energy to you know, be with my wife at night, <laughs> put it mildly, you know? Like, yeah, I, yeah. So like and all, all this being said, de- top three, you know, or top movies that I like Braveheart, Mel Gibson, mm. huge one. I like the Dark Knight series directed by Chris Nolan, Christopher Nolan. The, oh, there's so many good movies. I mean, this one, oh, you, I can't see it. Like the, if this is, this is audio. I have this, this wood panel in my office with oh. this Latin phrase burned into it. And it's a movie directed by Ridley Scott mm-hmm. called The Kingdom of Heaven. And it, and it, it's, it takes uh, place over the second and third crusade, in between the second and third crusade. And I, I'm not a huge history buff, sure. but the main character, Orlando Bloom, not a huge Orlando, Orlando uh, Bloom fan, but Balaam, the main character, he's a blacksmith. And in his journey in, and in his blacksmith shop, in the center panel, he has this exact Latin phrase, uh, carved into it and it's uh, basically says what man is a man that doesn't make the world better and i'm like oh this is one of those things that just hit it's, me I, I, because we want to make the world a better place and if you're not then what are you then what are you doing what are you doing and so and not that that has to convict everyone but it really convicted me and so that i look at that every single day cuz mm-hmm. i'm on zoom all day every day and it's reflected in my in my shot so i see it every day <laughs> nice and, and it just reminds me of you know what what who am i showing up as a leader for the partners and for my team and for my clients and for, as a husband and as a father just all those things yeah. am, am i if your absence doesn't make a difference then neither does your presence man that's beautiful oh god we're going philosophical I know right. that one's a little deep. Sorry. All right. It's Enlightening good, round good. doesn't even make sense. Why? You, I can't talk so much. All right. I'll be faster. Let's go. No problem. What movie would you choose if you got to play a character in it? Dang it. What's the first thing that comes to mind? I, you know, like the Ted Lasso character is like a cool character. Oh, my God. On so good. Recent series. Because it, it, here, uh, let me say it more simply. The character that has heart and humor. So there's a lot of Robin Williams roles. Yeah, where he he's I'm not liked. The dude can do voices and do all that. He's insanely talented. Yeah, as a storyteller and actor. But, but like a lot of Robin Williams roles, where there's that element of laughter, but there's also just that like heart too. That's like heavy connection. So roles like that, and then like I don't know, like Batman would be totally freaking awesome to play. Like I love that. You know the yeah that hero's journey is a good series. i love it yeah the hero's journey is just amazing because it just reflects a lot of what we go through every day and that comes to our question who is your favorite superhero would it be batman would it be you know w- one of them that's not as like po- popular like i probably f- match more of what captain america embodies mm. but one that i is probably my favorite but it's not as popular is green lantern Oh man. Um, it's because his superpower is like it's like creativity almost. Like he creatively salt like he can create whatever and use that to get well, out of 
I think his scenario. superpower is his will. Yeah. The cleanliness of his heart. That's why the ring picked him. And yeah. then it, it's all just a matter of, okay, to be superhero, you got to create all these things. I mean, that's, that's secondary, but the main superpower true. is that true will and that truthness in his heart. I think that's what attracted the thing to him. Love no, it, you're, you're, that is, that's a hundred percent on point with the story. W- why he's my favorite is, is like that pure intention. He's like, he can like generate like whatever's needed. And it's just kind of this, yes. you know, abundant, yeah. infinite concept that I'm drawn to. And I think Ryan Reynolds did an excellent job in the movie. I know. Rod Reynolds fan. I know. I love that guy. Yep. All right. Yep. Last question. If you are a board game, what would it be? Man, these are good questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind is sorry. Sorry you had to play a board game. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> uh, my wife makes fun. She's like, you never like to play games. I'm like, I do just, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I played like Shoots and Ladders and Candyland and Sorry and Yahtzee and what's Baccarat? I played that one like, you know, growing up and stuff. Nice. Who knows? Well, that's not a board game. So it's funny. What, would, Monopoly. what board game would you be? Like your... Sorry, like if, to get the board game. Sorry, okay, sorry. All right. It's like you like click the little thing in the middle and the dice, and That's I, it. Okay. I set it for like a stupid reason. But it's like sorry, you got to play a board game. <laughs> <laughs> That's the board game. I love it, man. Um, where can my audience find you so they can get a little more of you? Yeah, uh, b- best place to catch me is in our Facebook group, Flow Chat is uh the name of our software company and so if you just actually we got to work on our google presence but if you go to uh facebook and type in flow chat one word official community Mm -hmm. um it's our it's a free community of other you know nerdy entrepreneur business owners that geek out on sales and marketing you'll see endless free content of sean my business partner doing a sales tip you know three times a week and then i do interviews which yours truly janaid was a spotlight yeah. member of just recently so thank nice. you janaid for coming out uh and speaking to our community as well thank you chris i appreciate it we'll be sure to include all of the links to your community on the show notes and this was so much fun talking with you. Thanks so much. Have a great one. Thanks, Nate. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode on Hacks and Hobbies. We absolutely appreciate your contribution. You can find additional notes on hacksandhobbies.com. Please share the podcast with your friends and tell them what you learned about our guest today. 